that uh, it is clear that uh, we're not pushing anybody in any direction uh, at all, um, but uh, we are um, uh, um, opening up options. And these are conversations that are, are close to all our hearts. I mean, like John Izzard, I'm a, a Methodist minister in full connection with the British Methodist Church still. Like uh, John Townley and Mike, I now uh, work and worship within the Free Methodist Church. Uh, we've just moved house quite recently into Bristol. And if uh, I step outside uh, my front door, look down the lane, a hundred yards down the lane is an independent Methodist church within the independent Methodist connection. And uh, one British Methodist church has already transferred to the Independent Methodist Connection, West Camel, down in Somerset. And uh, Derek and I had an excellent conversation with Dorothy Kendrick, the president of the Independent Methodist Connection. Dorothy, we're delighted that you're here with us and, and for uh, the conversations that you've been having with us. And uh, we want to hand over to you now for your 10 minutes to introduce the uh, Independent Methodist Connection to you. And thank you so much for all your encouragement to us in these days too. Thank you, David, and uh, thank you to everyone for your invitation to share in the conference with you today, and I bring the greetings from the uh, Independent Methodist Connection of Churches to you. These are indeed strange times, but they're also times of change and opportunity, and it's a privilege to join with you as you pray and seek God's guidance for the future. Contrary to popular belief, the Independent Methodist Connection has never been part of the Methodist Church. It arose out of a fresh movement of God's Spirit, which resulted in a number of new churches springing up independently in a variety of places. And the first of these was in Warrington in 1796, swiftly followed by other churches opening in what is now the Greater Manchester region. And these early churches began to communicate with each other until in 1806 they arranged their first meeting, which was held in Manchester. However, it wasn't until their annual meeting in 1898 that they finally chose the name the Independent Methodist Connection of Churches. In those early days, we had strong links with the primitive Methodists. For Peter Phillips, who was a, a leading figure for the Independent Methodists, and Hugh Bourne, founder of Primitive Methodism, were close associates. And many of our IM churches formed in the second half of the 1800s were born from Primitive Methodist roots. Today, there are 68 independent Methodist churches across England, predominantly in the northeast around Sunderland and Durham, and the northwest in the Greater Manchester, Wigan, Warrington, Lee. Liverpool areas. Um, we also have one church in Staffordshire, two in Yorkshire, three in Pendle, three in Bristol and Somerset, and one on the Isle of Man. Our membership is 1,270 and more elderly than young. Nevertheless, our financial state is sound. We have a set of buildings in good repair and we have a good body of people in the 50 to 80 age bracket who are willing and able to serve God and his people. We're also a people of prayer who trust in God and seek to be obedient to his word. Each church is autonomous and congregational in government with the local members meeting being the final deciding body. Our preaching generally follows the tradition of Wesleyan Methodism. Our ministers are trained but not ordained. They undergo a recognition and commissioning service once they have completed their training. They don't hold any title, there is no ministerial dress, and they are non-stipendiary, so their only distinction is that of function. There's no retirement age, but ministers who are unable to undertake active ministerial duties after long years of service may be considered for the ministers emeritus. Women have always been included and encouraged within the roles of leaders and ministers. Baptism is a decision made by the local church. Many of our churches, particularly in the Northeast, because of their church deeds, practice infant baptism. The remaining churches are varied in their practices. And similarly, our practices regarding communion and worship vary across the connection with each church agreeing their own format. 
During our history, we have undergone various changes as we have sought to move with God's spirit. At the moment, we recognise we are in another stage of change as we continue to emerge from lockdown and its effects. And this would seem an optimum time to welcome members into our fellowships. Our relative low number of membership in our churches means newcomers are not necessarily swallowed up, but would be welcome to join in the prayer planning and working out of the local vision for mission. Several of our churches are without minister or leaders and would welcome people to assist in the mission of the local church. We do acknowledge the tremendous pain of leaving a beloved denomination and would seek to work together whilst retaining independent Methodist principles and objectives. Any coming together would be a joining and not a merging, but our structure is such that change is possible according to God's guidance. I do believe that we have something to offer and this is an opportunity for growth and change as we seek together to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. And we've put together a booklet with details of our connectional constitution, statements of faith and practice and other useful pieces of information. These are available for anyone interested in discovering more about the independent Methodist connection and anyone interested in further discussions. And should anyone want to consider the history more, there are two articles from John Dolan written for the Wesley Historical Society, which would also give background and understanding. And all of these are available on request from Derek Bolsden, the MET development worker. Thank you. Dorothy, thank you so much for um, joining us today and, and we are delighted uh, in the conversations that uh, we're, we're able to have together. So thank you very much for all that you have um, shared uh, with us today. Thank you.